yeah, so then uh, Burton came came in then. Um, I was obviously released by Cardiff and looking for a club that summer. Quite similar to um, when I signed for Cardiff under Malcolm McCoy, um, Nigel Clough rang. Um, he'd, he'd had references about me from John Brayford, who oh, yeah. he'd managed before. And John Brayford's played for Cloughy at a good few clubs and he's one of his like favourite favourite players like rightfully so to be fair and uh, he just basically said can we meet and I was like yeah absolutely like I'm, I'm looking to get back playing and I want to stay in the championship I don't want to drop down if I can help it I'm desperate to show I can still do it so we met and uh, he just because Burton was a tiny club really to be in the championship because they've just met, gone up haven't they yeah yeah they've just double promotion lead two mm. lead one so basically just we sat down talked about football talked about like he was like we're going to need defenders who can defend and all that and it was a bit like the Malky conversation at that stage of my career and where I was at it just made sense I was just like yeah I fancy it it's going to be back to the wall can we stay in the championship manager was a bit old school a bit like sounded like he'd look after a, a, a senior player like what, the stage I was coming into and whatever and, and to be fair he, and, <clears throat> and then he said uh he asked all his staff to leave the table. He said, can you just give us a minute? Can you just leave the table? And then he said, right, <laughs> down to the financial side of it. I know you've been at Cardiff, which is a big club. He was like, I can offer you this. And he was like, this is every single penny the Burton Albion can offer you, right? <laughs> I'm not messing about. There's not another penny in the budget for this position. How's it sound? And I was like, yeah, I'm in. Mean, like, yeah, let's do it. Um, that was it really and it was, it was great I loved it stayed up that first season he was brilliant because basically he had his budget for his players he had like his budget for all his staff and all that and what he used to do was was like he'd chop out the last bit of the playing budget so he'd go back to the chairman and he'd be like right, no no that last 30, 40 grand there for players we need to chop that out of the playing staff budget that's for trips for the players that we've got so it was like <laughs> we it was like every single international break that we got to if we were out of the relegation zone we'd go abroad as a team on the lash oh hello so it was like the first season was like got to the got to the break out of the relegation zone so we were off to Marbella for four days for the closing party. Then next international break, we went to Miami for five days. Jesus. National break. It took us Abu Dhabi. And then the last international break, it took us Tenerife. Wow. So like what he'd do was you'd play the game on the Saturday, the league game. Then that night, hmm. you'd fly to one of wherever he was taking you. And so you'd be there till the, the Wednesday, early Thursday on the trip with the lads as a team. Then you'd have the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at home with your family. Start training again on the Monday. Oh, what a time. Like, but you needed that just to get over it. Look, yeah, this is it. But like in the modern game, like you couldn't no. act for more. Like <laughs> most times these days would be like, yeah, lads, we're going to train Monday to Friday, you'll get Saturday, Sunday off. Here's your gym session for Saturday morning sort of thing. But like Cloughy used to shut the club for nine days in international breaks. That's so immense. It was amazing. It was honestly amazing. And you'd go like, you'd go away and all the rules were, so it was like you had two rules. There was no training, nothing. So two rules was like, you have your breakfast as a team <clears throat> in this room at nine o'clock in the morning and you have your evening meal in this room at 6.30 at night. Other than that, Go out. do what you want. Look after yourself. Don't get arrested. And that was... <laughs> oh, mate. Cluffy's a ledge. Signed me up. <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant. And then he'd like... He'd just like... He'd like throw some like things that you couldn't really... Like, so like, we'd go out and like, obviously I was one of the senior boys. So like, we'd be about to go out on like the second day or the third day. Everyone had finished breakfast. He'd be like, go on lads, <clears throat> have a good day. And like... I'd walk past and he'd be like, take care of them turns, make sure everyone gets back. And I'm thinking, geez, there's like 25 
young <laughs> blokes do. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Gaffer. <laughs> yeah, I can't guarantee. Like, but it was sound like there was nights where some young lads. Remember, do you know? Uh, so like, you know, Hamza Chowdhury at Leicester. Yeah. yeah. Now, like he's coming through at Leicester doing well. So he was unknown us at the time, and like the one, the one night. So it was like six thirty dinner, and he used Clough used to love this. Like the boys is like carrying Hamza in because he's blind drunk, right? <laughs> like carrying him in over the shoulder, just plonking <laughs> down in the seat at the at the at the dinner table in our private room, this uh, hotel. He'd just be like off his head, blind drunk, didn't know where he was. <laughs> the fact that he was there, right, and the fact that the lads had got him there. He loved like that. he loved it. He was buzzing off it. He was like, that made him laugh. Do you know what I mean? He was just like, it was mental. And like in Miami, he'd like, he'd just walk across the pool to like the hot tub thing where the lads were sitting having a beer, and he'd just like drop a crate of chilled buds down, and just be like, "Everything all right, lads? Everything all right? Need anything? Leave like leave the buds there." He'd be back over on his deck chair with his glass of wine, like watching, he loves like American sport, he loves baseball and stuff. He'd be watching that, or he'd have a read of his book. And it was like, because we were at the relegation zone and we were Burton in the championship, but it was like, look, you've earned it. You've earned it, have it. We're all in it together, looking good at everyone. And of course, like, there was the flip side of that. When he thought he'd let you down, Jesus Christ, he would let you have it. Like, there was nothing he wouldn't say. He had fully grown men in tears and stuff. It was mental. Like, I remember one game we played uh, Preston away. And uh, Chris O'Grady, Chris O'Grady was the one, big, strong lad, Chris O'Grady. He was the one who carried Hamza to lunch. To, to the forward, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, couldn't hold the ball up for love and money that day. Like, it just weren't happening for him. And uh, their centre half was getting really aggressive with him at Preston. Coming in at half time, we weren't playing well. And he's like, on one. Gaffer's on one, thinking, oh, God. So he's like, gone for Cog. And he's like, Chris O'Grady Cog. So he's gone, uh, basically, he had this thing Cluffy did about strikers stopping the ball. You know, like holding the ball up. But he'd say, he'd say, stop the ball. And he meant physically stop the ball. So yeah. there was no rotations left in the ball. It was old school. He wanted the ball to stop. So there was no rotations. And then you can do what you need to do with the football. That was what he wanted his strikers to do. Right? So he's going off cock and he's like, what have I told you? Stop the fucking ball and all this. And Chris has gone. Uh, Chris is having a bit of a bad time, but he needed a goal and whatever. Gone, I'm trying gaffer, but they're like, they're right up my arse. They're coming through the back of me quite strong. And Chris O'Grady so was built like action, man. He was like the henchy skis ever. And Cluffy had this, like, mad sarcasm in him when he needed it. So, like, Chris has gone, ah, they're coming through the back and gaff and all that. And he's, like, stopped. And you're thinking, oh, God, he's going psycho mode now, which was, like, it was class because it was a good, like, it was a good part. Like, you talk about it all week then. And he's gone, ah, oh, are they, Chris? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, oh, wow. then, like, he had this great, like, he tell you what he would do. So then he'd go, do you know what I'd do, Chris? If I was as fucking big as you are, I would go fuck up and I would stop the ball and I would do exactly what the gaffer said he to do, right? And then, oh, blimey, like, like, he went mental at him. And Chris, right, has obviously, like, felt like the world was against him at this point. And he's just, like, completely lost the plot. He was like, but I'm not big gaffer. I'm not big. He was like, I'm this small, and just grabbed his water bottle, smashed it onto the floor, like the hardest smash of a water bottle you'll ever see. Like, no one knew where the bottle went, he like disintegrated somewhere, and just started crying his eyes out like a baby. And he was a bit mm. like, oh, where do we go from here, lads? Where, <laughs> wow. What's the next step here? Sorry. And the, <laughs> just gone. And the lads were like, come on, Chris, we need just to right? come on, like, and all the rest of it, he's like, no, I ain't playing, I'm not going out there, fuck this, I'm not doing it. whatever. <laughs> anyway, he's, he's gone out for the second half, his head's gone, like he was nearly fighting a, one of the lads from Preston, and the gaffer's had to take him off in the end. But this was the thing, like, ah. just, no reverse, just no reverse gear with Cluffy then. 
So we're like, <laughs> out on the training ground on the Monday, he gets everyone in the warm up. We're thinking, oh, maybe he's going to apologise to Chris, <laughs> letting him in all the it. Like, none of it. He was like, just stood us all around. He went, Does anyone in this group feel fragile? <laughs> we're all like, Oh God, where's he going with this? He was like, Anyone? No? He went, Because if you do, let me know. He goes, I'll stick you in the players' lounge. There's a lovely screen there between between the players' lounge and the pitch. No one will shout at you. Nothing will go wrong. You can have a nice watch of the football match. No? Everyone else wants to get on with their fucking jobs then? Come on, then let's get on with our jobs. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely oh, magnificent. It, it, it was like not, every, not everyone could play for oh. him, but like you could get your head around it that like he's going to have you off. But like... When you're doing well for him, he'll look after you. He was brilliant. Like, he played he's got shades of his old man then, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, he must have, because his old man was quite, like, obviously, like, that way. But, like, deep down, a good, like, deep down, a good man, like, he'd look after the lads who, like, tried the bollocks off. Like, <clears throat> but he, no one was immune from it, that, that one could have it, and that was the beauty of it, because he kept the changing room going, because there was always a little story mm. going on, someone was getting it or whatever, and like, we played a game, it was Leeds away, and uh, we needed a goal, like, we were 2-1 we down, we needed a goal, it was the last few minutes, and uh, he'd set up the set pieces where me and the other centre-halves were staying back, but we needed the goal, it was the last minute, so we were up there, they broke, scored, and they won 2-0, and uh, we come in the changing room. So obviously the whole game had happened and we were chasing. It was the last kick of the game. They broke and scored because we were up for a set piece. And that was like, he was like, cause the little things mattered. And he was like, turns, Bray. Bray was at the back of me, he went, what are you two doing on that last set piece? Dead, dead. What You know when he's going really calm that it's coming? We were like, what the, the one, when they broke at the end, it was like, yeah, what are you two doing? And we were like, are oh, we chasing the game? And we went up, tried to get a goal, Gaffer. He went, okay. Tried to get a goal. <laughs> you know, oh God. He's gone. <laughs> Trying to get a goal. He's like, and how many goals have you two got this season? <laughs> we were like, I uh, haven't scored yet, Gaffer. He went, and you, John? But I was like, none, Gaffer. And he was like, none. No goals between you, but you're up the other end of the pitch trying to get me a goal when the job I've asked you to do is stand <laughs> back and stop goals. Right? Like, like you just break it down like that. And then he'd go, How about you do what the fuck I'm telling you to do? Do the job I'm paying you good money to fucking do. And we were like, Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> As he'd, sorry, he'd go, it was unbelievable. It was, it was class. He'd go, like, like me, me, Brian. Fads was playing in the back three that season and like it was like I was 30 Bray was 30 Fads was 31 and like games when it didn't go out he'd come in and he'd go you three at the back he'd be like how old are you three he'd be like 30 Gaffer 30 Gaffer 31 Gaffer he'd go 91 years of age 91 years on this planet and you go and perform like that <laughs> <laughs> you think you would learn by now. 91 years old. <laughs> you just add your age up and just bollock you with it. It was just like brilliant. But, but it was class because, like, yeah, just different. You'd do like a really hard pre season day and you'd have like a bucket of beers for you at the end of it and a pizza and stuff like that. It was just like, that's class. He had like a human touch as well. But like, when yeah. he went, <clears throat> like when you get in it, you were getting it. It was class. That's brilliant. Um, go, go on, Greg. I've got to ask about, like, obviously, you had, obviously, your good times there as well. The cup run that you had. I mean, the teams, the teams that you, you beat along the way, and then, obviously, you got up to the, the big boys, and then they put a little tump in past you, but... Late cup semi. To play in that sort of game and against them and the players that you come up against, um, it must... It, as you say, obviously, you've just explained what he's like, but, I mean... For you lot to even get there, and for him, what what he would have been like for you lot in that run, and the fact that you boys have as a as a group and that have, have achieved something massive like that, 
Well, the team the teams yeah. you beat on the on the way, like you beat Villa, Burnley, Forest, and Middlesbrough. Yeah, and then face City in the semi. Well, this is the thing. This is the one. This is the one time where, in my time at Burton, I felt a bit hard done by. Like I thought a bit like, like Jesus. In that, I played every single game in the cup um, to get us the to help get us to the the Man City game. Um, which was obviously a massive occasion. I remember like some of the young lads in the changing room were buzzing that we got it and all the rest of it and thought it was brilliant. And I remember just, I remember saying to a few of the young lads, I was a bit like, you do know how hard this is going to be, don't you? Like, you do, like, is it like, I'm quite dry and sarcastic in the changing room at times. And I was a bit like, it's not, it's not all that brilliant, lads. Wait till you get on the pitch with them sort of thing. And, uh, because, you know, I knew the goal, like, we'd done really well. We'd knocked out, like, teams above our station already, we had. But this was a this was a different yeah, kettle. Different kettle. You know, semi-final, first leg at their place, on telly and all the rest of it. And Pep weren't resting, no one. We found out one of the lads knew uh, Carl Walker, I think it was, and they'd done, like, a half an hour video meeting on us, analysing us and how they could hurt us and all this and it was a bit like Jesus. These ain't these are taking this locker because it's semi final of the cup. They were they were taking it proper serious. Played us full hammer, but we got beat. And do you know what? Like we started all right, then we, we ended up one nil down after about half an hour. And that was just that was just too good for us. And could we have done things differently? Yeah, we could have. Like we could have maybe set up differently, slightly short shop a bit better and stuff like that. And like we just. The floodgates opened and it was like a tough, tough night. Um, and that was the sad thing was for me was that was the, that was the that was the end of me at, at Burton really under under Cluffer because he said he said on the night he was all right with it and we go again in the league and all the rest of it and he was good as gold on the night. Um, and uh, and that was fair enough. But then on the Saturday then. We've got robbed in the last minute. I think Rochdale at home beat us, scored in the last minute. And um, I think they beat us 2-1, two, two, maybe 3-2. It was just one of the things where, like, it, that, it was one of the best we played and we just got... Just didn't quite happen for us in, at the end of the game, but we played well. And uh, then after that game, we turned up on the Monday and he just he was on one. And we had to, like sit down then and watch the goals we've conceded in the last three games while he counted them like on the big screen so it was like we were watching the man's goals go in just sat there the whole team and it was like one and the next goal had come two next goal had come three next goal had come four then he started missing the odd numbers then he'd go he'd wait and he'd go six miss seven eight like just, just proper having us off and all that. And uh, he started like asking a young lad what he'd do and why he'd done, and then he'd say like something like, he started referring to me and John Brayford as Premier League defender one and Premier League defender two because we played a season in the Premier League each, highlighting us with a laser pen, going Premier Premier League defender one here doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, Here's Premier League like this is what it was like, and like you know what like I can't even. Like, I honestly can't even slag him off because I loved playing for him. I did. I loved playing for him, even though, like, it was not, it was proper, proper naughty what he was doing. And then he'd go, like, like, we had a young lad coming through called Ben Fox. And he'd be like, Premier League defender number one here doesn't know what he's doing. So you, Foxy, at 18 years of age, you're better off making your own decision because Premier League defender one, not going to help you. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I'm muggy, it, was like, it? <laughs> honestly, it was like mental and then the, the problem then like we, play, we played man we played man city in the second leg just before half time and tweaked my calf basically i had this thing i turned 30 i don't know if it's because of the ankle ops or bad <clears throat> i get grade one tears in my calf every now and then now and like we'd been beat 9-0 by man city in the cup and then the return leg Tweak my calf just before half time and we lost one nil that night and everyone did himself justice. But I think between like that, the fact that we he didn't think we were going to get promoted and I was one of the higher earners at the time. Um and my calf, I think he kind of smelt that like 
every now and then his calf's going to go and that's going to be annoying. Um, yeah, and then within two weeks of playing Man City in that semi-final after the mad run we'd been on and I'd contributed in every leg and the club had made a fortune mm-hmm. from playing at uh, Man City. Yeah, he, he called me in and offered me a pay-up. He just said, like, um, given where we are in the league, I don't think we can get promoted and given your like joint top earner, um, I've got to start thinking about rebuilding for next season. Um, so um, the club's going to offer you a pay-up, see what you think of it. And uh, it hurt my pride a bit because <clears throat> I'd always felt since the day I walked in, very wanted by him, even though every now and then he'd say his things yeah. to like, anyone, anyone got it. I didn't take it personal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't take it personal. Now I look back now and I've seen him since and I said hello and proper proper like playing for him and I'd, like anyone who'd ask me I'd be like go and play for him it's a right good crack like and like mm-hmm. he can get a team going um, but now it hurt my pride a bit thinking oh, he wants to pay me up like and I was a bit like the logical thing to do would have been because he, he had his moments he tried to like a few other players who like he wanted to go and then changed his mind on and all that and he probably was just hurting from the 9-0 and I probably should have stayed kept my head down and tried to win him back round but I don't know like I've got this like little pride thing in me where if I don't feel really wanted I just yeah. I'll just get out of that person's way sort of thing so I just didn't even negotiate really I just took the offer understandable and yeah. and, 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 and got got out of the way um, <clears throat> but can't, yeah I, I wish I stayed and, and tried to win him over because like I say he did a similar thing to McFads in where he wanted Fads to go and then Fads started playing the team again Stevie Bywater he had at Derby and he went Complete. They had a massive fallout. They ended up signing for Burton. He was one of them kind of managers who, like, give and he forget. Would, he, yeah, he could forgive and forget. And I hadn't actually done anything. It's just like, yeah, the results have been frustrating. We were still like one place out of the playoffs, or something, and uh, it was still all to play for. But I just, I just thought like, if he'd have really wanted me there, he, he might. He'd have kept you if he wanted, yeah. Yeah, and he wouldn't have like, said, given where his salary is, because basically at the end of the season, he could have offered me revised terms and all that. It's been mm-hmm. like the Cardiff one. It's like, I knew, I knew how, I knew, it's kind of like when you're not, when you've been told you're pretty much not wanting somewhere, you're better off just uh, moving on before it gets in, yeah. like, before it goes sour and if you wanted to go sour. And he didn't go sour and sent, I moved on, sent each other a nice message. And uh, that was the end of it. But I, I like, genuinely like, I, it's one of my, well up there in my career for like the most of enjoyed football the first season when we stayed up when we were odds on to go down and we were never going to go down because we had good players and also we we were always ready for a tear up like so it was like we got like night the, the night games in the Pirelli like tiny little stadium like teams would come and they just they weren't as at it as us they didn't fancy it like us and we it was brilliant it really was brilliant I'd love to do that all over again I really would um, go on Greg I've just got like obviously, I mean, as you said, you lot done yourselves justice in the in the return leg, like only losing one nil. But I've got to ask about Phil Foden. He played in both games, and obviously that was early on in his career. And I think he's obviously gone up a few levels since then. But how good was he? Brilliant, yeah. A lot of them were, mate. Like, like, and it's probably because of the gulf between them and us, just generally. Whereas, like, last time I'd been playing these teams was at Cardiff. At Cardiff, we didn't take many hidings at all. Um, but it was because the gulf was less. We were one of the lesser teams in the Premier League, but we were in the Premier League. Whereas this was like a just outside the playoffs, League One team playing them. So they all felt brilliant. But yeah, Foden, a few of the boys commented afterwards what a player he's going to be because just the way he moved the ball. Yeah. Uh, the the things stuff like that, but they were they were they were like very very good and like the crowd. I remember I remember the crowd uh, like chanting "We want 10 when it was nine, <laughs> <laughs> and like at the time, like you're there, and it was like <clears throat> I remember the back four looking at each other, and we were just like not no not ten doing not anything ten, you yeah. can like, like take someone out. Fouls in the halfway line, not ten, and it was all like it was like at this point it was taking everything we had to try and not let it be ten. And it was like Jesus, the effort you're putting in to not let it be ten. It's like 
<laughs> shows how good they are, doesn't it? Well, they won a domestic treble that year. Yeah, yeah. They were all, they all, At least you know, lost to the winners. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they were fantastic. Like, genuinely, they were. And credit to them. But, like, it's, it's not the best situation, is it, when you're, like, it's taking every bit of professionalism, effort, ability, everything you've got as a team to not let it be 10. Yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. ideal. And, yeah. and then... Obviously, you you moved on after that, and then the following month you you had signed for Mansfield, um, and then finished the season there uh, in League Two, finished in fourth place, and lost in the playoff semi finals to Newport. Um, yeah, on penalties as well. I think that was actually. Yeah, and then at, at the end of that season, you sort of re rejected an extra deal there, uh, and moved on yeah. to where you are now, Notts County. Yeah. Um, how did that come about, mate? Well, the the Mansfield thing, in hindsight, I should, what happened there was really was I got offered a pay up. My pride was hurt. I had twenty four hours because the window was shut in. I needed to get something, and it was all a bit rushed. And I didn't quite get it right. I probably did the wrong thing because nothing against. Uh, Mansfield it was more more the situation was I went there thinking they were in third they've got every chance of getting automatic promotion but what I didn't realise was because I didn't have enough time to look into it and double check everything I didn't I didn't clock that they had the best defensive record outside the Premier League that season so the only team with a better defensive record was Man City who had just done us in the cup they conceded less goals than anyone they were playing a back three and I didn't know that they had the best defensive record. I didn't know they were playing a back three, which was like probably not ideal for me at my age. And the back three was very settled. And the back three was like what the them being so high in the league was kind of built on. So essentially, within a week of being there, I kind of realised he's going to stick with these because um, they've got him this far. This is like, we're going into February. That's the start of Feb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and rightfully so. Um, and he did. And he stuck with them. And they hovered about in about third. And he kept saying to me, Fleet Croft, like, you know, you're a great pro. Hope you understand what's going on here. Um, really appreciate you coming and all that. I, don't, I just don't want to break this three up and demoralise anyone, not when they've got me this far. And I was like, listen, Gaffer, let's get promoted. We're back, in, back into League One. Um, Hopefully you want to keep me and we'll we'll have a pre-season and like, then it's a fair crack of the whip for me. Until such a time, I'll just get behind the lads, do everything I can and I'm, I'll be ready. And essentially, I didn't really get a running, I didn't get running the team until, uh, so basically, we had, in the last four games, they lost every single game. Um, and by the time the final day of the season came, all they needed to have done was take a point out of one of the games and they got beaten all of them. Oh. Which was like frustrating me when you sat there watching thinking you've been third all season and you get no points from the last four games sort of thing. It's a bit like Jesus. That's and then on the last day of the season, we go to MK Dons. If, M if we draw or win, we go up. If MK Dons win, they go up. So the draw was us and the win was us. MK Dunn's away. And Matt Preston, one of the back three, goes down with concussion in the first 20 minutes. We were 1-0 down after two minutes. Oh. And at that point, that was me, like, really going to get my chance to, like, show what it was about. So I came on. We got beat 1-0. We just we had chances, but we just couldn't, <clears throat> couldn't equalise her. So we lost 1-0. And then... Um, we drew 1-1 at Newport, drew 0-0 with Newport at home. Um, to be fair, like, played well in the playoffs, played well in both legs. And we got beat on penalties, didn't go up. Um, manager got sacked, which killed me a bit because even though I hadn't played a lot, I had a good relationship with Flick Crofty. Like, mm -hmm. He was one of the managers who, like, he actually managed. So, like, he talked to me every single Friday when he wasn't putting me in the team because he was keeping the other three. That's good. Kept very, yeah, kept reassuring you because, like, doesn't matter how old you get, you, some, sometimes you need um, you need that bit of uh, reassurance that 
what you're being told is the truth and he kept reiterating it every week. He got sacked. <clears throat> Uh, John Dempster, the UT manager, got promoted up. He rang and said he wanted to keep me. Um, and at this point, basically, because I was having these like irregular sort of little grade one calf injuries, I wanted to get two years because if you imagine I was 31 and a half. So two years would take me to 33 and a half. And I just saw it as like I've got less trust in my calves at that point than I'd had previously in my career. Because I didn't tear a calf at all till I was 30. And I just wanted to like, I thought it was my last chance to get two years. So I thought it was worth making that the um, the main point of who I was going to sign for that summer. Yeah. So I said, look, I'm not, I don't want, look, I want to sign for two years somewhere. That's like, that's all I want. Like that, that is the main thing that I need. Um, Mansfield wouldn't do it. So I was like, fair enough. We 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 decided that, like, you know, that was that. And then it was tough then because um, I had like offers, two or three offers in League Two again to play for a year. And I thought, well, they're not as good clubs as Mansfield, and I've already said no to them because they would only do me a year. So I got that far. And uh, in the end, it, in the end, like the season was starting in like four days' time, and I was in Egypt with my family. <laughs> it was like I wasn't going to go, but my missus was like, "Well, if anyone rings, you just fly home, don't you, and just get on with it." There's no point seeing at home, thinking when am I going to get to the next club on your complete home while we're all over here. So I went over there. I just went was going to the gym every day, and then I got a phone call from Michael Doyle, who I played with Coventry all the way back at the start. When I was uh, 18, he was like vice captain and he was at Notts County at the time. And he said, uh, he was like, Turns, do you, uh, would you consider coming here and be talking to the gaffer about you? And I was like, well, ideally, I want to stay in the league. But um, obviously, it's a huge club. And I knew the gaffer because the gaffer, Neil Ardley, he, was, he used to run the under 23s at Cardiff. Right, yeah. He was like, the gaffer's asking me, can you ring you? I was like, yeah, of course you can. So he rang um, and then that was it really he was like what, what's going on why have you not signed for anyone I don't understand it and I was like to be honest I've been trying to get two years because I want to I want to be under contract like it's my last chance to get two years I want to make sure I get it um, and uh, he was like well we'll do two years not not a bother like. and that was it signed from Nuts County brilliant easy as that eh? <laughs> really? yeah I was just waiting I've never like I've never been like one of them overly like I don't know how much difference I was probably I was probably just like not being active enough like probably like not and I would never pick the phone up and ring like you know what I mean yeah. ring, I don't know just ask them people yeah. I don't know maybe I should maybe be a bit more like that but I was just kind of like trying to get the word out with that really Cold. That, that, the feeling of what being wanted rather than obviously you going to someone and then oh, really, right. yeah. yeah I've always had that lot where like even now it's like still got it yeah it's like I'm not I ain't very good I would like and it, luckily I've positioned myself where it doesn't happen for very long if not at all but I'm not if I'm not wanted somewhere I'm a bit like well, I'll go and do something else then do you know what I mean because yeah. like Time like life's short, and it's time you ain't got yeah. there's only time you got, and it's like you might as well do it with someone who wants you to actually physically be there. Yeah, it's true, mate. And then, well, obviously, like you're, you're at Knox County as we speak, and last season you finished in third place, um, and then ended up going to to Wembley, a uh, playoff final against Harrogate Town in yeah. front of no fans, first yeah. sort of after COVID and that. What? Yeah. Like obviously, we're still in in that sort of position of fans not not yet back in in grounds and that. Is it is it surreal? Is it is it is it horrible for for you guys? You know what? The, the Wembley one was because the only other time I'd been there was obviously the Carling Cup final and to go back in a National League playoff final with no fans. Yeah. 
<coughs> excuse me. It was um, it was weird. It's got to the point now in league games where I'm kind of used to it. Yeah, it's been so long, isn't it? It's gonna be weird when they're back. <laughs> oh, shut Getting up! Feeling, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll all be shouting at me again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah go on, Greg. Uh, I've got to ask, mate, about um, the Oxford City game. Did you play in that? Oxford City? When Eli Sam scored this goal, mate. Oh, oh no, I was there, though. I was there, though. What a goal. I mean, how was that? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I really don't. I don't think he can quite explain it because <laughs> it's like, obviously, it's an unbelievable goal, but Oh, he's, I've not seen him do anything similar. It's just instinct at that point. It was just behind him and he's just done it. And he's... Yeah, yeah. Probably just the, the the moment of his career where he was destined to score the best <laughs> thing he ever could have done. That was it. It just like happened. The, what do you reckon? Has he got a chance in this old Puskas award? But what what is this then not like goal of... They they pick like a goal of the of the year sort a of goal of the year, yeah. football. It could be a Sunday league game. If we're filming yeah. something in Sunday League and someone scores a ridiculous goal and you submit it as a as a contender, yeah. it, it can win, yeah. It, it can't be far off, can it? It's so unique. I don't it's think like, I've seen a better one this this year. Like you could you could honestly say you could like Put a session together and have 150 goes, couldn't you? And not yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Like you could, couldn't you? Like it's just one of them where, like, it was like we were in the stands, the lads who weren't involved in the game watching, and we were just a bit like, what? Like, <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's just like <laughs> it's just a so one-off. It's like the you know, like the Giroud one that he pulled off that time, and and like yeah. they're so off the cuff. But I mean, the fact that he's even done it and it's gone in, the the keeper must have been absolutely <laughs> fuming. <laughs> fuming. <laughs> mental, honestly, mental. Like, does he go on about it? No, he calls him out. I talk was, about that every day. <laughs> do you know what? Like, he was dropped the next game. <laughs> what? <laughs> My child, <laughs> son. <laughs> i tell you what. Thanks for that. See you later. I don't... I might have this wrong, but I don't think he started a game since he did it. Oh, I'm my God. <laughs> He's peaked. That's what that is. Yeah. If he has, it's one. Because he weren't in the team. He'd been dropped. He got put in because it was a cut game against them. And then he got took straight back out and he hasn't been back in. Oh, man. Where does he play? Where does he play? Well, we signed him as a striker, but he played a lot on the wing. Oh, right. So far, <clears throat> to try and like get him used to the uh, get him used to the our uh, football, yeah. Like one of them trying to like, like you know, like bed him in by like playing him a bit wide, so it's a bit less in your face and all that, yeah. But no, I don't think he's played since it's mad. He scores the goal of the fucking century and never gets yeah. another sniff. <laughs> He, he don't need to, to be fair. I bet he's, yeah. he's still happy. He's exactly. Like, don't like, fuck, like yeah, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> <Living off it. laughs> in with Gary Bedell. Yeah. He's like, he scored the best goal that anyone has ever seen. <laughs> or it's up there. Really? And he can't get a game in the National League. <laughs> it's yeah. men. It is crazy, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then, like you, I've just had a look at the league table for the, this season, mate. You're currently sitting in in sixth position. You've got a couple of games in hand on the teams above you, um, and unfortunately, Neil Ardley left left his position yesterday. Yeah, um, he's been replaced by Ian Birchnell today. So, yeah, um, yeah like, have, have you met the new gaffer yet? Literally, just briefly, he just came in, called a meeting. Um, a left footed cross into the just said area. that you know he's happy to be uh delighted to work with us and all that and then yeah it's true I'll see you tomorrow for training sort of thing let's get hold of the ball into the penalty who's watching the fucking who's goal? got commentary on sorry that was my bad <laughs> sorry about that Ben you're watching no. the goal here yeah I'm re-watching it again to <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. I was at the, the... It's unbelievable. Oh, it's a joke. Um, I didn't realise you could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> do you um do you know much much about him or what sort of changes he's gonna make, what sort of style he'll implement or anything? No and no. <laughs> <laughs> Find out this weekend. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the answer. I could try and bullshit you, but I honestly don't know. No. Fair play, mate. And then, like we said, this this Saturday semi final of the FA Trophy as well. We said off camera beforehand against Hornchurch. So yeah. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. You sort of get that done, mate, and another trip yeah. to Wembley. Yeah, because I think if we get there, I think some of the fans can actually come by then. Oh, you'll have to sort us out if you get there. So. Not County. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah. Get the old black and white on. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eli Sam fan club. <laughs> um, we'll be sitting next to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eli. <either. laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Poor son. <laughs> He'd just be showing us the goal, wouldn't he? <laughs> Yeah, you can get us a signed shirt and we'll, like, you know, frame it or something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Never to play again. Bless and then, like, that sort of brings us up to date, mate. So just to sort of tie everything together, I'll just run through a few questions based on your career so far. Yeah. So, first one, best player you've played with? Peter Wingham. Oh, what a player. God yeah, rest his soul. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Just like... Just the left foot to die for. Just like he, he just he, he loved Cardiff. Um, he moved there. He's from like not far from me, like Nuneaton Way. Uh, he moved to Cardiff and um, met his wife and all that in Cardiff. He, he never really wanted to leave, but like he really, really could have. And like to fulfil how good he was, probably. Probably should have, but like, it's kind of not how he was. He was settled, he was happy, he was with his wife, and whatever. But like, his left foot was just ridiculous. He just like, even in training, five hours and that, he just couldn't block his shots. He just bend it round you, no matter what. And then if you overcall with that, he just bend it into the other corner. It was just stupid. It was just stupid. And at that point, like, so that was me at my best. And it was like, blocking shots was my thing. I'm block of fridge. Like, and it just, <laughs> he could, he just bend it round me, bend. He like, was just like, "Come on, Pete." One. He was a magician, mate. Unbelievable! Like you can like YouTube his best goals and stuff, and you're just a bit like, "What?" Yeah, it's like, isn't it? Just unbelievable. And then just like, didn't go mad to celebrate any of them because like it wasn't a surprise to him. Like, do you know what I mean? It was just like there was never like a to him. It was never like, "Oh my god!" It would just be like, whatever. Oh yeah, that's what this left foot does. <laughs> that's another one. <laughs> yeah, no, he was a great Probably. player, mate. Um, be best player you played against? Uh, Aguero. That's what I'm. That's my guess, anyway. Do you know what? Yeah, like, I would go Suarez. Not. Yeah, I'd go. Yeah, I think I'd go Suarez. Not. <laughs> not. This is a lot of players who I've played against. Is he not players who've been up against me? If you know what I mean, like so. Yeah, strong. of course. Yeah, because so, like it's kind of up for the midfielders to say about the best midfielder and so on. Yeah, but, like the thing, the reason I'd go Suarez is because he took your shirt. No, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we played, look, basically in the cup final, it didn't quite happen for him. Fair enough, it didn't quite happen for him, and we we had a great game. But, like, in the league games that we played in the Premier League, he was unbelievable. And not only that, it was, like, out of all the, like, top ones, like, you were Agueros, Rooney, Suarez, them kind of ones to come up against that season, Samuel Eto'o, people like that. It was, like, he was the, he was so hungry. Like, he would, like, rat you down for the ball, even though he was at the bigger club and didn't really need to. He'd be, like, beating you 2-0, and he'd just be, like, a dog after a bone. It was, like... Just like really? at it, like at it, at it, and also like 
ball and fall out of the sky and volley into the back of your net from 20 yards as well. It was like, it was a bit like flipping it. This guy's like not really showing you any vulnerability in his game. He's like, he's fit. He's so strong for his size. Like, just low centre of gravity and like, you'd, almost, you'd be like, thinking you're going shoulder to shoulder and he'd be like, shouldering your right in your side of your abs like. It'd be like, he, he, he was just a, he was good, like he had. To, he, he just seemed like he had it all, like including the work rate right, and the desire as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no coincidence. What he, look what he's gone on to achieve. You know what I mean? With, with Liverpool yeah, and no. Barcelona and now at Atletico as well. What, what a world class player! Um, most underrated player you ever played with? Um. See, now this one, this will be that Cardiff team that got promoted to the Premier League. There'll be a few candidates in there. Players who, like, you wouldn't think it, but, like, when you're with them every day and see how they trained and played week in, week out, like, people like Mark Hudson, um, just like so consistent so so consistent good at his job just not very fast but there's a few of us in that team who were just like really un like really under the radar how like effective they were like Kevin McNaughton at right back right. Um, Don Cowie in midfield just a workhorse just like players who like are never going to be the like Peter Whittingham's because everyone in the yeah. fan base is very good Peter Watts but like just players who were a bit more like under the radar, but like when you when you're out there with them, that team's full of like underrated players, really. Barring yeah. a couple, yeah, fair play, mate. Um, worst trainer, uh, Medell. He was never there. He's in the canteen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember a player called Andreas Cornelius, the Cardiff yeah. song? Yeah. Yes. Like I'd got yeah, someone like him. He was just like it was like he was never awake. Like we'd like Yeah, just a dopey dopey man. But like, we were like <laughs> Remember we got to Arsenal away on the bus. Like he jumped on the bus last out of everyone. He's not he's clearly not been in the shower. Like he's got bedhead, like <laughs> he's got sleepy on, not had a wash, like he's got odd socks on. And like you're thinking, this kid's on like 60 grand a week, been so signed to keep us in the Prem for the goals. He's got up at a five star hotel. He's not he's not gone in the shower. He's probably like, just a sloppy man. And you're just thinking. They showed on the pitch, mate. Where, where did you? Where did they get him from? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> Someone good. Bus stop. <laughs> a bus like, stop. Like, you know, you're just thinking, like, come on, mate. At least have a shower. Go in the Emirates. Like, dip your head under some water. Live enough. They got him from FC Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Like, I could see why, like, he would like. Have caught the eye and whatever, because he had the hardest shot ever when he caught the ball, like when he middled the ball, he could absolutely whack it. But like, God, he, he had some sloppy, sloppy days in him, like he was just like, <laughs> useless. Like, how do people like that make it? It's mad, isn't it? Well, he was six foot four, built like a brick shit house, and could kick the ball harder than Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. So like, <laughs> he had his, he had his perks, but like. <laughs> I'm Just saying never like, use head and shoulders. Yeah, yeah. But like, this is what I mean about being underrated and overrated sort of thing. He just like, he was like, he just, some days it was like he just weren't there. He never used anything he had. You know what I mean? Didn't use any. Yeah. Just didn't fulfil his potential. Uh, he'd, sit there, he'd sit there and he'd eat lunch. Like, he'd go upstairs, he'd have like this massive Parker coat on. Zipped up to the top like that, so he'd barely get his mouth out the top of it. And he'd sit there and he'd eat his dinner, he'd eat. 
just like a bizarre character. Like, yeah. but, who anybody is, else would take a jacket off, wouldn't they? Yeah, not, but not even a jacket. We're like we're talking like a full on furry. <laughs> like, you must have sweltering like these, like, you think, Madel yeah. had a bib on, didn't he? I mean, <laughs> as he's there smashing it in. <laughs> Uh, did, no. he, did, did, he, did he score many or no? No. <laughs> he's 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 never, he never, he never scored. He never scored. Did not. But since then, I've just had a little Google search of the fella. Since then, he went back to Copenhagen, scored a fair few goals, to be fair. Scored 40 in like 100 games. He must have had a wash. Do you know who plays for now? Who? Atalanta. Oh, yeah, they're, and they're fucking flying, isn't they? Oh, Champions League? Yeah, decent. Yeah, yeah. He's actually, he's not playing. He's out on loan this season, but he's at Palmer on loan. Fucking hell. Not bad, is it? So he's done all right. Fucking... Oh, yeah, like, it's one of them, like, if you could get him going and all the rest of it. But, like, it was weird. And then, like, it, it, I'm sure he terminated his contract. I'm, I swear he signed, like, five years on, like, 60 grand a week. Yeah? So... Run the maths on that. He's entitled to <laughs> millions, isn't he? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right? I'm like... Last night, more than that. Wasn't working out within a year and he just walked away from the whole lot and went back to his boyhood club. And you know, you think, like, it was just a bit like, does this keep going to switch on and, like, understand what's going on here? Team's not with it. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Matt, over three and a half million quid, I think, in contract. Yeah, yeah, just like, just, but he, he, that was him. He's just like, walk around like a zombie. And he'd be like, is he even like, he's like, he was sleepwalking every minute of every day. Maybe he mm-hmm. found spice before the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to okay. be a chance. And then, next one, hardest player you played with? As in, don't want to have a fight with? Well, Yeah. Like, you can yeah. take it however, like, hardest Very, on the pitch, or, yeah. but in general, yeah, someone you wouldn't fuck with. I wouldn't fuck with Robert Page, the old Wales captain. He, who was he's, at, he's in charge at Wales now, isn't he? Yeah, he's well, just, gigs, yeah. 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 Like, thick set, old school, could have a tear up kind of guy. Clive, Clive, Clive Platt, Cardiff. Oh, yeah. yeah. You used to call him the tree. <laughs> the tree? He was a... You wouldn't want to mess with him. Um, big, tar- old target man. And then, like, hardest, like, in terms of, like, made out of granite sort of thing. Probably John Brayford. Wow. Just, like... Like, don't be wrong. Like, not... Not not in the way that the, I'm saying the other two in terms of, like, that. Like, a much yeah. more... And all the rest of it. But, like... Play with any injury going, like yeah, to drag him off, like take bumps, knocks the lot, and just keep coming back, like bit of like that little man syndrome <laughs> grip sort of thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, and then hardest one you played against, uh, Darius Henderson. Oh God, yeah, he was a beast. Yeah, animal, yeah. absolute animal. Like you know, like when you're a centre half and like strikers backing in and you'll put your arm up to like instead of pushing you hold your ground by like I'm not pushing yeah. I'm like, yeah. like pin the, you'd like pin the striker to win the header if you like you do that Darius Henderson try and break your arm <laughs> like genuinely try and break your arm like and then you play the whole game you'd be thinking oh god like every time you're going for a challenge like a strong aggressive man right the few like I was in the papers a few times where only for like just knocking people out in bars and stuff, looking at his missus or whatever. And like the game, then the game would end, and like he's like literally like your arms hanging off, you're thinking, God, like he's probably done a few ligaments here in my elbow or whatever. And then he'd just shake your hand and be off, and you'd just be like, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate. Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah. Been trying to break out my arm, mate. Now he's shaking my hand. <laughs> the, whistle, the whistle must have done something in his head. He's just like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember got, we, when we were at Cardiff, he got, we, we were playing him and he got sent off in the first 20 minutes. And like me and Hudson were just at the back. And it was like, oh, thank God for that. Like, <laughs> nice done, done something crazy in the first 20 minutes. And we were like, oh, yes, he's off. We can save our arms for the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one, and I'm going to guess that Cornelius isn't going to be the answer on this one, but biggest diva. He's Diva. 
Jeez, there's a lot of them in football, man. <laughs> Biggest diva. Oh, then Wingy be up there. Yeah, that don't surprise me. Yeah, yeah, I'll go for him. Fair play, he's a bit of a flash one, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> um, funny man. Funny man. Craig Noon at Cardiff. Really? Funny guy. He's a scout player and all. Yeah. 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 Dude, like, quiet and that. Have a few beers and just like mad dance moves. <laughs> like, that was our mind the day. Just dance himself into a sweaty mess, but just look. <laughs> yeah. Kyle Jones. <laughs> just look. Yeah. Yeah, just sweaty like. Mess. Uh, just thought, yeah, I'm having that. That guy's easier for a good time, like. And then the next one, which manager was the best player when they took part in training? Oh, Cluffy. Cluffy, yeah, I was going to say, he's got to be. He's a, do like, they used to do like, um, <clears throat> he'd have like, it's mad really, he'd have like a f fourth and fifth choice goaler on the books who could be training with either the youth team or didn't really need to be at the club. And, like, when all the other lads were warming up, they'd go in goal, he'd get people to, like, chip balls to him and he'd just volley balls as hard as he could at the goal. <laughs> and, like, these goalies were pretty much... He'd have a couple of goalies on the books at any time and that was pretty much what they did. They were Cluffy's goalies? Yeah, yeah. And Cluffy and assistant manager just be volleying balls at him with their tops off, like, catching a few rays before training. Unbelievable. <laughs> but, he, but his volume was better than anyone else at the club. He still had a bit then. Oh, because he'd be practising the volleys every day. So, like, <laughs> honestly, I'm not messing. He like, was like a professional volleyer at this point. Like, he volley a ball. But like, every now and then, you'd go into the physio room and like either him or one of the other coaches, they'd be on the physio bed because like, they'd done a hammy or a calf or something like volleying balls because they, they didn't believe in warming up. <laughs> that was superb. Um, and then based on like the initiation songs, Best singer. Right. This is going way back now, but when I went away with England 19s, Daniel Sturridge's voice was unbelievable. Really? Unbelievable. Okay. And I don't know if this is like common knowledge. <laughs> I just remember, yeah, I just remember like, did my, then he did his, because he was playing up a couple of years or a year or two, whatever. And I was a bit like, Jesus. This guy's actually good. There was another one, yeah. Yeah, like, carry on, go on. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, this one you can sort of take however you want. Um, I think we're going to know the answer, but uh, biggest dick you ever played with? Jay Tab for one. Tripod. <laughs> 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 Love it. I thought, I thought you was going to go like an, an actual, not not a Corey. I thought you was going to say the biggest dick in football. And the way you was thinking about it, I thought he's not going to go for length and go. That's what oh, I thought as well. Yeah. Well, we can do both. Oh, go on then. <laughs> the biggest dick was Wang Kala. Don't know who that is. Wang Kala signed at Cardiff. Oh, Quella. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He signed from the uh, from Spain. What a dickhead! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Love oh, was that the one that came from Seville? Yeah. Why was he a dickhead? Just an arrogant uh. cock, like <laughs> no, no manners. Like thought he was better than everyone else. Uh. Like just an honestly. Did you ever rattle him in training? It's a knob. Look, I was always stood next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking like... Wish I was on the other team and I could clean you out. <laughs> don't know what this guy. No, but he, what he, he, was, you like, 
No, he was. He, 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 I don't know. I weren't having him. Brilliant. Um, yeah. The next one is best Christmas party. Christmas party. Uh, Dublin with Cardiff. Any Fancy. reason in particular? No, I just. Fancy dress, and to be fair, I always remember this one because basically I got double booked. So, like, I was godfather for my nephew's christening on the Sunday, sorted all that with my brother. Then the Cardiff Christmas do got arranged, Dublin, Saturday night, Sunday night. Oh. So, I was like, oh, for God's sake, what am I going to do? So, in the end, we've, we've I've gone on the do Saturday. Like, gone out with the lads, gone from the night out to the airport, flew back to Birmingham, did my nephew's christening at 11, flew back to Dublin at half one, dressed as John Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Met him straight, Brilliant. Straight, uh, straight back in the pub. And like, to be fair... It must have erupted, no? Oh, it was ridiculous. So, like, I think a lot of them thought, like... Won't see you again. Yeah, won't yeah, come back. You know, one, that's, that's, you won't do that. And I, me- I like, remember saying to the ones that's close to it, I was like, I'm coming back. Like, don't worry about that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'll be yeah. back. <laughs> so I've walked back in, fully rambled up. <laughs> and, like, I got, like, absolutely mobbed, like, pile on, like, guinea... This is in my face, like, like, I thought I was going to, you know, like, you think, I thought I was going to get my, like, glass up to my cheeks through, like, shoving it in my face that hard. <laughs> Got all, there was nothing left in my costume, gun was snapped in half, bullets everywhere, like. Bullets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but you know all the, uh, you know the thing is, the like. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Like, I was, and, like, it was all just gone, but, like, it was good, man, because, like, I've turned back up steaming because, like, I was drinking on the plane. I hadn't stopped from the night before and whatever. And they'd obviously been in the pub in Dublin all day. And, you know, he just walked back in and it was probably a bit like, they probably was thinking, oh, he won't come back. He can't come back, can he? He's at his fingers christening. And it was just a bit like, fucking hell, he's come back. It was just, now it's class. It was oh, good. I bet that was outstanding, mate. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and then the last one we've got is... Who's your closest mates in the game and could you get them on for us? Jay Tab's coming uh, on again, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, um, uh, Tabby's one of my best mates in the game. James McPake, who's Dundee manager. All oh, right, yeah. Um, yeah, then I've got like a few of the lads at Knots, like Damien McCrory, um, Michael Doyle. Uh, oh, mate, yeah. Doyle's a ledge. He, uh, we had him at Leeds, yeah. didn't we? Loved him. Yeah, Doyle, yeah, Doyle's bonkers, mate. It's cluster. Um, then still got a bit. I've not seen him play for a while. Has he still got a bit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's nearly forty. Like, like, yeah. He's not as young as he was, but he's still got a bit. And then uh, John Bradford. And then, generally speaking, there's like there's probably like five or six of us from the Cardiff team that's still in constant contact with each other, like myself, uh, Hudson, Big John Parkin. Uh, oh, I love Parky. Craig Conway, Craig Noon, Don Cowie, Kevin McNaughton. We we still all talk all the time. Oh, um, mate, got a few, mate. Yeah, so it's like that Cardiff group, and then a couple from the other teams that I've been at. Uh, Cole McFadden as well. Um, Burton. Burton was yeah, he's a good lad. Good player he was as well at Burton. Yeah, liked him, mate. That's that's brilliant, though, Ben. Thank you for that, mate. Really appreciate you coming on. That was a uh, that was something chat, special. Mate. with some absolute yeah. minders in there. Cheers, Ben. The Brian oh, Clough is probably the Brian Clough is probably one of the best stories I've Brian ever Clough or Brian Clough or <laughs> Nigel, <laughs> mate. Any chance? <laughs> 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 we're not editing. We're not editing. Get out. Get out. Get out. Getting late, lads. Late. Um, we, should, we 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 should have started at seven. This is I'm yeah, not that's dying. it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Everyone who, who's watched, thank you, thank you for watching. Slap a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and um, yeah, rate and review on any of your podcast platforms. And uh, yeah, till next time, thanks, guys. See you later, Cheers, mate.